Hey guys, it's Mia here, and welcome back once again to another bookish video. Now today I thought it'd be fun to talk to you guys about my bookish preferences, because I've never really specified what I don't and do like in books and stuff. So I thought it'd be fun to get into. So let's get into it. Now I did actually take notes this time, because I wasn't really familiar with all of that stuff. So I made sure I knew what everything was, and I actually do have preferences towards them, even though I didn't particularly know about them until this. So first off is character perspectives. Now I certainly have talked about this one a few times, but my preferred character perspective is first person, and that's because I am very much the type of reader who has to picture the story in my head and kind of put myself in the story. I turn the book from a words on a page to a movie in my head and it makes me have a hard time if I'm constantly like on the outside of the story looking in. I kind of feel like that makes me a little self-centered but it's easier for me to go on that journey and follow in first person. But third person doesn't bother me that much. I just prefer first person. The second one is my preferred book type. Now, my preferred book type is definitely hardcover because I am most certainly someone that likes to keep my books. So, having the hardcover that'll last longer and stay nicer longer is just a lot better for me because I am someone that likes to keep my books and likes to keep them in good condition. Although, I will say that hardback covers and softbacks work fine as long as they're not the super fragile, super easy to break like after was. I read after once and it looked like I read it five times because the cover was that weak. Those type of paperbacks I cannot stand. But this one I read twice and it's still in pretty darn good condition. So durable paperbacks and hardbacks, but I certainly more prefer hardbacks. So with that, do I prefer good character writing or good plot? Now this one I am certainly in the in-between of because I like characters to feel like you could reach out and touch them, like they could exist here in our world. But on the same time, if you don't explain the world in the story, I'm not going to care about the world. Like, I feel like someone that gets this balance really well is Rick Riordan because he introduces you to the characters, tells you their origin, tells you the god or goddess or both that they are the son or daughter of. And he also does a really good and actually an amazing job at establishing the myths and the legends and it feels like he way deeply cares about the world of the Greek myths and the characters he's writing and stuff like that. So I feel like he is a great balance of character versus plot because he cares so much about those myths and has them to draw on. Now, the prose, which is like the writing style. I don't like super flowery, over-explained writing, like in Twilight. I feel like Bella oftentimes kind of talked in a Shakespearean kind of over-the-top way, when she could have explained it so much easier in the normal way, and it kind of makes the book feel unnecessarily long, and feels like a way to pad the page fill of a book. But on the same time, if you under-explain things, 
you're not gonna get the gist of the world or the characters or how a character acts. And I also like the middle ground with the author throwing in their own style, just so you can differentiate the different author styles. Now, introspective is when, like, a character's in their own head. Once again, I am in the in-between on this because I love when we get to see what a character is thinking or feeling because, once again, like I said with the character versus plot, the introspective of being in a character's head makes them feel more real. It makes them feel like they could be human and not just a character made up by this other person. But if we start to get too much of the character being in their own head, it starts to take over the story and really um, slow, slow it down. So I like being in the character's head, but I don't want to be in the character's head the whole book. Certain reactions to certain things, I want to know what they're thinking, but like them constantly writing notes in their head the whole book gets a bit overwhelming. So then we have relationships. I am not and have never been the biggest fan of romance, mostly because they're predictable, they are over the top, they are insta-love, or there's love triangles or they are controlling and abusive and made out to be cute and desirable. Um, a lot of times I feel like romance authors kind of talk down to their audience or treat their audience like they're stupid because they sit there and th make us think that these two are not going to get together or this peer are going to get together when we know for a fact that these two couples are going to get together. Like, did anyone actually think that Bella and Jacob were going to get together? I don't think so. There's, like, love triangles are so pointless unless you actually twist it and get with the person everybody was expecting them not to get with. But nobody does that. It's always predictable. She always goes for the insta love, the one that we knew she was going to get with the first time, but the author the whole time is stringing us along like we're stupid and don't know the outcome. And it's with that in like all those different types of romance books that have that sort of love triangle situation. And then on top of that, with the insta love, there's no excitement there because they meet and it's like they've been together forever. They are constantly on each other's shadow. You know they're not going to get with anybody else because they have this unbreakable soul bond from a past life or what the hell ever. And once again, that's predictable and boring and meh. And a lot of the times, not that I find these desirable, but the steamy scenes in a book are not that steamy. Like, they're built up like a carrot on a stick dangling it in front of the audience that are reading, yet we get PG-13, not good, or skip it entirely. Like, why do they do that? If you're going to make a romance, at least give your audience a steamy s scene to appreciate. But they don't. And in adult, like, romance it's even worse because you're expecting it to have those steamy scenes because the readers are adult but they're not there so there's no payoff to them they're predictable they're they talk down the insta love is annoying and unrealistic the love triangles are boring and predictable it's just a whole mess although i am finding myself more enjoying romance not because of those things but because it's just nice sometimes to sit down and read a predictable book like oftentimes i like adventure action blood horror i like those sort of things but sometimes i'm just like meh i just want a book that doesn't have to be too invested 
let's just read this and have a good journey and some good feelings. That's all there are for me. So, descriptions. Once again, I am in the in-between ground on this. I like a book to not be overly descriptive. Like, I do not want to hear every description of how she has her hair styled, how she, what clothes she has on, what color her clothes are, like, what every detail of her room looks like. We don't need to need, know all the itty bitty details of like, oh, there's a rip here in her clothes, or oh, there's this stain here on her clothes, or oh, she's got a black mirror on her wall with a flower mirror right behind it. We don't need to know all the nitty gritty details. Give us enough to set the scene and move on, or else it just makes the book really, 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 really drag. But also, on the flip side, you don't want little details like like she's a girl she has telekinesis like okay she's a girl with telekinesis what else is she what's her personality like is she a f spitfire is she a hothead is she calm and reading and readable and like you don't want too much detail because it starts to get boring and slow down the story but once again, you want the characters and the world to feel realistic. So you need enough detail to pull that through. So, standalone versus continuation. A lot of times if I really care about a world, I will want it to continue. So my favorite continuations are usually trilogies because for me, any more than that, and it starts to feel like the author stops caring about their own stories. Like, the Red Queen series was a good example for this for me. Because I loved book one. I loved the crap out of book one. Book two was amazing as well. Book three kind of dr dragged a little bit. Because it started to get more perspectives and more character perspective stuff for us to follow and that made it hard because we went from like one or two perspectives to all of a sudden in book three we switched to like four or five and it got really hard for me to follow but other than that it was still good and then I waited like a whole year for the last one to come out literally I waited a whole year and I had to reread the other ones of the series only to be immensely disappointed with book five that I ended up intentionally going online and spoiling it for myself. And apparently I'm not the only one who thought that book had a terrible ending to the series because everyone was saying they DNF'd it, it was bad, I'm disappointed, so it wasn't just me. And in terms of characters, I feel like you can get too many, like Nora Roberts and Year One. Oh my goodness. I know it's a survival story, but you could narrow it down to like three or four people were following. But there is like too many characters to count, and she expects us to keep track of every single one of them. I think just in the first few chapters, we meet five people we are following and it only continues to grow from there so it got very hard to follow and I was actually doing this as a buddy read with some of my online friends well one of my online friends and she thought the same thing so that wasn't just me on terms of anticlimactic endings which I didn't talk about this yet but if I prefer a strong start strong middle or strong end I think I'm more this is a hard question honestly but I think I'm more for a strong middle because I know that especially in first books it's gonna take a little bit to get the story introduced the characters introduced the world introduced and before it gets moving so I'm okay with a slow start but if it doesn't start to get good toward the middle it's more than likely I'm going to DNF it. So a strong ending is not going to help you because I've done already DNF'd it before I got there. So I'm definitely more a strong middle person.
Now, one of the books that I really enjoyed was Lovely Bones. And it was very anticlimactic in the ending, and even my grandma thought so, because this was once again a buddy read, because I ended up getting two copies of the same book. So we buddy read it, read it together. Now, in terms of character writing, one of my favorite, like, family dynamic relationships was in the book The Hate You Give. Oh, this <laughs> Sorry, it's still sad. This family just felt so real. They felt so real. Like, you could feel the love between the characters. You could feel the the caring and just the, f the family bond that they shared just <sighs> and I still feel like Star got really cheated in what happened this is not a review just saying she I, I feel like she should have known about the outcome first not the entire world and her finding out at the same time but oh my god this 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 story just this story it made me laugh, it made me cry, it made me angry, it made me, like, fall in love with these characters, and just, I love it so much, and she did a great job, and it's still, like, literally one of the best family-written books I've read in all my years of reading, and just, this author did an amazing job, and this story is really good, Except for the fact that I feel like Star was cheated in finding out the outcome at the same time everybody else did. I mean, in the entire world. But like, this book. Great character writing, great story. Just, it's an emotional roller coaster. So if you're up for one of those. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I love that story. Now. I think that is it. I think I got everything. So yeah, that is my bookish preference. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below and I will shut up now. Hope to see you next time. Okay.